Welcome. Today I want to talk about divisibility by the number 11. Many people know a rule for this, but I want to explain what the rule is, more importantly explain why it's true, and then for fun put some twists on it that just make things very curious and interesting. Alright, so first of all, what is the rule for divisibility by 11? So apparently if I take a number like uh, this one, what have we got? 3,211,373. What I'm meant to do to test for divisibility by 11, apparently, is to do the alternating sum of its digits. That is, go plus 3, then minus 2, then plus 1, then minus 1, then plus, minus, plus. And then work out that alternating sum. So 3 minus 2 is 1, plus 0, um, that gives me 1, plus there's 3 and 3 is 6, minus 7 is 0. Well, clearly 0 is a good hearty multiple of 11, which apparently means that the original number itself was a multiple of 11. In fact, you can check that 3, 2, 1, 1, 3, 7, 3, I believe is 11 times um, 2, 9, 1, 9, 4, 3, or something like that. All right, here's another number, 8,352,718. To test if that's a multiple of 11, we do the ordinary sum of the digits. Okay, plus 8, minus 3, plus 5, minus 2, plus, minus, plus. I work that out. What have I got? 8 and 8 is 16, and 7 makes a 23. Um, this negative 3 and the 5 makes a 21, but then I've got this negative 2 and this, and this negative 1. So, ooh, what am I doing? That adds up to a 22, if I did this correctly. Oh, which is a perfect multiple of 11, which apparently means that this number itself, 8 million whatever, is itself a multiple of 11, which you can check it is. A small example, 2,816, plus 2, minus 8, plus 1, minus 6. I have plus 3 minus 14, that's negative 11. Yep, negative 11 is certainly a multiple of 11, which means that the original number itself was a multiple of 11. All right, why on earth would that work? What has the alternating sum of the digits got to do with divisibility by 11? Well, the answer comes from the fact that we work with a base 10 number system. So let's look at the powers of 10 on which our numbers is based. So we have 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. And let's look what happens when we divide those by 11. Well, clearly, dividing 1 by 11, 11 goes in 0 times, leaving 1 left over. So that is a remainder of 1. Dividing 10 by 11, 11 goes in 0 times with a remainder of 10. So that means it's, it itself is 10 more than a multiple of 11. But I'm going to think of that in a funny way. Being 10 more than a multiple of 11 is the same as being 1 less than a multiple of 11. So I'm going to call that a remainder of negative 1. 100. 100 is 1 more than 99. 99 is a perfect multiple of 11, so that must leave a remainder of uh, plus 1, 1 more than a multiple of 11. And it turns out 1,000 is 1 less than a multiple of 11. You can check that 1,001 is uh, 91 times 11. So that means it leaves a remainder of being equivalent negative 1. A remainder of 10, technically, most people would say, but I'm going to think of it as a remainder of negative 1, 1 less than a multiple of 11. And we can play this game over and over again, but but let me think. Let me think cleverly. Let's go, let's go back to a thousand. I mean, that, I I don't you know this is kind of bizarre to me. A thousand. Think of it as ten times ten times ten. We've already just said that ten is equivalent to being leaving a remainder of negative one. So a thousand must leave the same thing as a remainder of negative one times negative one times negative one. Well, negative one times negative one times negative one is indeed negative one. So ten thousand which is really the number 10 multiplied by itself four times, leaves the same thing as negative 1 multiplied by itself four times as a remainder, which is then plus 1. So the next power of 10, 10 to the fifth, leaves the same remainder as negative 1 multiplied by itself five times, negative 1, and so on. So we see this alternating patterns of plus 1s, minus 1s for the powers of 10, which means when I'm dealing with an actual number, and let's actually do an actual number, like, I don't know, Oops, where's my pen? Uh, let's do 81,263. I'm going to think of this as 8 groups of 10,000 plus 1 group of 1,000 plus 2 groups of 100 plus 6 groups of 10 plus 3 groups of 1. And I'm going to ask what happens when I look at their remainders upon division by 11. Well, 10,000 leaves a remainder of um, uh, uh, plus 1. What am I saying? Yeah. 1,000 leaves a remainder of negative 1. 100 leaves a remainder of plus 1. 10 leaves a remainder of negative 1. Uh, 3 leaves a remainder of um, plus 1. Uh, sorry, 1 leaves a remainder of plus 1. So basically, upon division by 11, I could see that this number leaves the same remainder as 8 groups of plus 1, and 1 group of negative 1, and 2 groups of plus 1, and 6 groups of negative 1, and 3 groups of plus 1. That is, I see the alternating sum of its digits appearing as the remainder upon division by 11. 
So if this number itself, which is the remainder, is itself a multiple of 11, that means it's zero remainder, and the original number itself was a multiple of 11. Amazing. In fact, we've proved a bit more. Uh, for example, uh, we know that 123 is not a multiple of 11. It's two more than a multiple of 11. But this technique says, actually, upon division by 11, the alternating sum of its digits, 1 minus 2 plus 3, is the same as the remainder. And what is 1 plus 3 minus 2? It is 2. So I can actually see the alternating sum gives the actual remainder upon division by 11. There's one, one danger with that, though. One danger. Notice that we always want the final digit to be positive. So if I give you a number like, I'm making it up now, 3, 1, 4, 4. If I did this alternating sum, I'll go 3 minus 1 plus 4 minus 4. It's not what the method is saying. Um, if all I care about is whether it's divisible by 11, yes or no, I could be off by a minus sign, but that won't affect divisible by 11. So that's why you can actually be a little flippant with uh, which way you start with these alternating sums. If I want to know what the actual remainder is, well, what is 3 minus 1 plus 4 minus 4 is 2. I know that is not the remainder of this number divided by 11. I'm off by a minus sign. The correct remainder is negative 2, which is equivalent to 9. All right, all right. So let's have some fun. So knowing this alternating sum trick, we can have some games. Uh, do, 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 do. For example, one can now prove that a palindrome is likely to be a multiple of 11 half the time. What do I mean? First of all, what's a palindrome? Uh, palindrome is a number that, that reads the same forwards as backwards. Six, whoops, six, four, two. I claim any palindrome with an even number of digits must be a multiple of 11. Can you see why that's true? All right. Um, that leaves the question, what happens if I have a palindrome with an odd number of digits? Three, five, two, three, five, three. Must that, must that be a multiple 11? So I'll let you think about that one. Um, Saul Ledman pointed out to me a nice little feature that if one number is a multiple of 11, um, let me get a number on the board that we've done. Uh, I believe we've done, oh, silly me, we want that. 3, 2, 1, 1, 3, 7, 3. We proved early on that's a multiple of 11. Let's reverse it. 3, 7, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3. I claim that the reverse of a multiple of 11 is itself going to be a multiple of 11. I'll leave that as a challenge for you to think about. Why is reversing a multiple of 11 guaranteed to give you another multiple of 11? In fact, I'll make this puzzle even more curious. Let's take a number, I know, like, um, uh, well, one I've done before. Why not stick with the same numbers? Eight, three, five, two, seven, one, eight. Think of this as an even digit number. And I don't have an even number of digits right now. I've got those two and those two and those two. So let me think of this as zero, eight. I now claim if you flip the digits in each individual pair, flip zero and eight, eight, zero, three and five, five, three, two and seven, seven, two, one, eight, eight, one. I claim pairwise flipping of digits in a multiple of 11 keeps the number a multiple of 11. Can you see why? All right. In fact, that leads me to a challenge for you. Here's another way to test for divisibility by 11. Let me clear the screen. So let's take something like, um, do, 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 I need my pen back. Let's do this in bright, bold red. Eight, sorry, eight, three, five, two, seven, one, eight. Suppose I want to test this, this divisible by 11. Suppose you don't feel like doing the alternating sum rule. I claim, think of it as a two digit number like before, and you put a zero in front. And what you have to do, add up the two digit numbers you see. 08 plus 35 plus 27 plus 18. Add them up, and I believe in this case you get 88. And I claim if you sum up the pairs of digits this way and the sum is a multiple of 11, that meant the original number itself was a multiple of 11. I mean, there's another example. Let's, uh, let's do 121. That's a pretty easy example. I think it was a two digit number. Uh, 21 plus 01 is 22. 22 is a multiple of 11. That means 121 is a multiple of 11. So my challenge for you now is to prove why this. Uh, alternative rule for divisible by 11 works. And let me give you a hint. Think the powers are 10, but this time I'm really thinking powers of 100. All right, thanks so much.